an ounce. If it feels good. In my family, there is a story told about my great grandfather, Jens Christian Jensen, a very unique and ingenious man for his time. Great grandpa was a jack of all trades, raising a family on the alkali and prickly pear cactus flatlands of Emory County in Utah in the late 1800s and early 1900s. The area, now known enticingly as Castle Country, was a mostly Mormon pioneer community of folks scraping out a living in the lowlands along the creek beds, growing crops and livestock. These were an industrious lot who found ways to irrigate arid lands and scrape out a living in a place most folks would happily walk away from. But Mormons, members of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints, were pretty unpopular at the time. Just a few decades before, they had been forcibly driven out of towns they had built like Kirtland, Ohio and Nauvoo, Illinois, to name just a few. And they were happy to be in a place where there was no one trying to kill them and take their lands. Probably because no one wanted the remote, arid and barren place they chose to settle in. For Grandpa Chris, there was another way, other than farming, along with a few others to make a living. He was a prospector. Lucky for him, the area was rich in coal and other minerals. What the Jensen family found were some very rich deposits of uranium in a remote area around a place called Temple Mountain. Uranium was, at the time, an exciting new material of great worth because of its unusual radioactive properties. Madame Curie was spearheading much of the research on this remarkable mineral, and in 1903 she won a Nobel Prize for her work. In a way, a new gold rush was on and prospectors spent countless months and years locating and extracting uranium from the soils in and around the deserts of southern and central Utah. But Grandpa Chris had an early start, and the family and associates had staked their claim and started working it years before most even got started. Great Grandpa would travel to Temple Mountain on horseback and with his mule, work the mine, and return home to Farron. As he grew older, he began to suffer from aches and pains and found that the magic mineral, when worn in a pouch fastened around his body on his way home, helped to alleviate the pain and stiffness. And he was not alone in this. Many others around the world had found out that uranium and radioactivity that it contained seemed to help a multitude of human maladies. Hundreds of so-called medical devices were invented and patented and marketed to the general public all around the world promising cures for all manner of ills. But for Grandpa Chris, it just felt good. But in 1915, great Grandpa Chris passed away. There is a family story of his horse showing up without him and the sheriff's deputy out of Green River finding him. He was found sitting down, leaning up against a tree, hat pulled down over his eyes like he was taking a nap, with his mule close by and that money belt full of high-grade uranium strapped around him. As family stories often go, you'll probably get some arguments on the accuracy of this one. But his grandson, Scott Chadwick Fugate, worked for many years in the nuclear research and nuclear power industries and suspects it was radiation poisoning that took Grandpa Chris in the end. You see, the family kept that old pouch Chris wore when he passed away and decades later, Scott took a Geiger counter to it, and it was still filled with high-grade uranium, giving off plenty of radioactivity. The uranium that helped Grandpa Chris feel better and provided a good living for his family was quite likely the thing that ultimately took his life. Isn't it funny how some things that seem so right and make us feel so good can have such negative and devastating consequences? The enjoyment of a big chocolate chip cookie. Who doesn't love them? But you can't have too many because of the consequences of a poor diet. This is the case with overdoing it on any rich foods. It's fun to feed wild animals, to observe them, to be close to them, but the consequences of feeding them, well, they can become dependent or even suffer from an improper diet because of it. Not to mention how the Blue Jays can become a picnic table nightmare or how squirrels can use their genius to rob bird feeders and how raccoons, aka trash pandas, become dependent on garbage cans to supplement their diets. So here's the ounce. When you can, take a minute. Think about it. Even though it feels good and seems right, is it? Probably. 
but taking a moment to think about it can make all the difference between feeling good in the moment and a lifetime of regret. And that's it. An ounce submitted for your consideration. Thank you.